that I need to go. Three yeah. seconds. <clears throat> Hi, everyone, and welcome to the last session of the day. I'm very excited to introduce our next speaker, Michael uh, Latke, who is the CEO of Pushbase.io from Austria, is a JDE, Google Developer Expert, and also Microsoft MVP, is a trainer and consultant uh, with focus on Angular and RxJS. He's been helping others and consulting companies and developers to uh, set up scalable uh, architecture. He loves to share his knowledge. I myself attended a workshop uh, that he mentored and also attended his uh, lectures uh, in meetups uh, in Israel. So uh, it's very nice to present him, Michael. And yeah. I hope you enjoyed this session. If you have any question, feel free to write it down in the Q&A session. As I mentioned throughout the day, there is uh, a chance to win free ebook by our partner, Pact. So uh, ask away and enjoy this session. Bye for now. Okay, I will start to share my screen. And I can jump right away in the talk. <clears throat> okay, title is Next Generation CSS Render Performance. It's all about changes uh, to, to your code base to improve the performance without any single line of JavaScript. So really small changes with huge impact. To understand it better, let's understand what happens if you try to focus a div in the browser. No, just kidding. This is the new render pipeline of the browser. There were a lot of improvements over the last years, a huge uh, refactoring, and it is all getting to an end. It is all settling now, and we have new opportunities uh, with those features. The new uh, rendering engine is called Render NG Next Generation. What I want to present uh, today is two different CSS properties. One of them is the contain and the other one is the content visibility property. And they should help us to reduce work in the browser. And work in the browser is done in the render pipeline. This is what you see here, the browser's render pipeline. And with the access, you see that they can skip particular sections in that pipeline. If we look um, in this example, it shows how uh, could be done with CSS um, and layouting problems only. Um, and I have a small before and after picture that you can see how drastical the difference can be if you change just <clears throat> some slight uh, things in your CSS. To understand that, uh, we all need to understand the browser render pipeline, a very complicated piece of processes tied together. Um, but it is very important. Um, and the first thing that we will do in today, today's talk, I will quickly introduce myself. My name is Michael Michael Latke. Um, I run a company called Pushbase.io. We sit in Vienna and we are focusing on Angular and performance in Angular and performance in general. If you're interested on that topic or any other related services, let's uh, figure that out. Uh, just shoot me an email or ping me on Twitter. But for now, uh, let's get back and let me help you to understand the render pipeline, the browser render pipeline. And as we see in that picture, we have some JavaScript in yellow that is either triggered from the script itself or for some user interaction, some event listeners. Um, then we have recalculate styles, layout, sometimes a hit test, paint, and composite to bring all the information into pixel. The first thing, the scripting part, is basically here to load the DOM, uh, render the DOM to the browser, execute some changes, uh, bind some event listeners, and then the content starts to render. And what we do is we fetch all the DOM elements that we have in our HTML file, and we try to figure out which of the provided style sheets and style rules and style selectors are applied to which of those elements. 
And this is a very complicated process <clears throat> and one of the earliest process in this render queue that takes obviously most of the time. Then we have layouting and layouting basically is the process of figuring out the own dimensional uh, values and also where in the place you are positioned. So everything in 2D or to be really precise, also in the virtual 3D, if you include the set layers. Then we have hit test. This basically uh, happens if we try to interact with the page, mouse hover or something. And this is important to see where the mouse hover appeared on which element. Later on, if you know all that, <clears throat> we could start to bring all that information into pixels so that we finally can show it to the users. Um, and as there is the possibility to have multiple of those pixel images, um, the browser also has a composite step as a very last thing that combines all the pixel images together um, and bring them into one solid image. And this is the browser render pipeline. A very, uh, very important thing to know the different steps. And what you also should know is that you can skip particular parts in that steps. And we can do that with some new concepts. First, we understand some new concepts and then we will dig in. So what are those concepts? We have the border box. The border box basically is the dimensional container of a DOM element with all its width and height and where it is positioned and if it has a set index or not. And to understand how we can improve everything that is uh, purple in our render pipeline, we should understand the border box attributes and how to work with it. The second thing that we should understand is vis visible boundaries. So what are the edges of a something is or is not visible and this could help us re to reduce the green part of our render pipeline. And as a last step, uh, we should also understand the concept of the viewport and that something could be in the viewport visible for us in pixels or outside of the viewport, which is not visible for us, but maybe somehow in the document represented. As I will run a couple of performance measurements in my lab environment, I want to introduce to you my lab environment. I have this area that you saw here with full of green stuff and I have my performance tab here. And then I have buttons that can insert some content, for example, these items. And if I hover over those items, there is this menu popping up, just some, some demo content. I could also uh, remove that content. Um, I could insert, for example, paint and this is the first interesting content this is html content that mostly produces paintwork the green part uh, i could put the off screen button or the obscure button which is not that interesting for this talk uh, which helps me to push all elements in screen or off screen um, i could remove that again i can also insert some work that is only here for layouting uh, and then after some time, because it's a big, big DOM structure, you see it purple here. So this is my demo content and I can insert the demo content and shift the demo contents position. Now, what else can I do? I can apply different CSS stylings with that button here. And if I click on layout, for example, my box maintains this dashed line, the dashed line also known from the slides, it should represent that this is now applied with a contain layout, this special CSS property. And then I have work here and uh, I can do a first demo run that you understand what I try to demonstrate here. What I will do is I will trigger specific work and this work should apply to that content here and, I, and then I can measure. And I want to show you that paint trigger is not causing layout work, but layout trigger is called causing layout work so that you really believe me, all my measures, measures are true. So I have the content inserted. I start my recording and now I will trigger paint work and this should not cause any major work. And then I will trigger layouting work and this should show heavy flames in the browser. 
and I will stop my recording now because loading the profile takes some time. And then I can show you um, at the moment, both of them produced a particular work, uh, but the other one also included uh, layouting work, which is basically the information that we are looking for. Let's jump back to the slides. And as we understand how the demoing stuff works, we will also understand the following measures. The first property that I want to demonstrate is the contain property. Contain property has uh, a couple of different values which could be applied together. So you can have layout, paint, and size if you like. And I will skip some of them because they will not be really interesting for the today's talk. So let's start with the support, browser support. Contain is a quite well supported property or major browsers and a lot of old browsers uh, already have it. <clears throat> they have a slight different uh, impact in all the browsers, but in general, they do the same thing. And it's really cool that we have this solid and well implemented feature. What is this feature? The contain layout feature basically helps us to apply three different things. Uh, the, con the contain property helps us to uh, apply three different things, the layout property. This will help us to reduce the layouting work. Then we have the contain paint. This will help us to reduce paint work. And then we have contain size. And contain size will help us to reduce the work in the dimensional calculations. We will start with contain layout. Contain layout, this red dashed line that you saw before, that is here to reduce the work needed to figure out all the dimensions of our elements and where they are placed. And if we apply that property to an element, and I can show the measures later, the content of this element will have some optimized performance. The content of this element basically is shielded from outside work, which means um, if I trigger work outside, this work should not be executed. Another thing that I can do is I can contain work that is inside of this box, of this border box, and not affect other pieces outside of my, of my page. This is a very nice improvement. As, as you can see on the bottom here, we can skip the layouting part, or we can at least reduce drastically the layouting part. But everything comes with a price. Uh, we have some implications here. We have a design impact that is not to forget. Um, as the border box will get promoted to its own set index, it will contain its own stacking index. We will uh, have changes in how this element is positioned within the container. And on top of it, we will also have a change in its set, posi set positioning. So, we could experience bad effects uh, when we apply that um, to content that has overlapping stuff. And I will try to demonstrate that at the moment with this um, demo content here. So if I apply the layouting property to all children, um, now the, the menu works, but if I apply the hover, uh, the, the layouting, you see that the containers now have a different stacking context and we basically introduced a visual bug now. The user is not able to use the menu as it was be able before. Let's make a quick measure on how this impacts the performance. And what I will do is I will clean that up. I will insert my content and I will do two measures. The first measure is layouting work with no helpers and no performance optimization. Then I will apply the change to the container and I will run that again. And we should see two completely different frames. Yes, we see in the first part, there is a lot of work done. And in the second part, there is very little work. Here we even have a lot of frame drops and here we see no frame drops at all. So let me quickly um, show you 
what more detailed measures show with all the different setups, because it would take a long time to demo everything. But here we see the work itself with the exact milliseconds for this content that is 100% reproducible, then all nodes on screen, we see an incredible big drop and another measure with all nodes off screen with no impact at all. So this property only has impact on the on-screen elements. The next property, very exciting, is the contained paint. Contained paint basically helps us to reduce paint work in the browser, the green stuff. Let's first look at how we can apply that and what performance impacts we can get out of it. At first, it shields outer work and outer work, outer paint work will not affect the inside of this container. It will also reduce the paint area by cutting basically everything off the edges and this cutting off of the edges and skipping drawing of those content in the edges is not only applied to obscured nodes, but also as you can see for off-screen nodes or if the container is completely outside. This is the performance impact. And again, there is a price that we pay, but this price is a little bit more intuitive for us. The price is that we don't have the chance to have overlapping content. This is, as we would say, overflow hidden. And then we basically are locked to the physical dimensions, to the dimensions of the border box that is now also our visual boundary. I will quickly demonstrate you the impact uh, by adding my demo content here and we can see the menu is working. And then I apply the paint property to all children. Uh, and then we see that not a single menu is working, not even the last one because all the overlapping content is basically skipped uh, or cut it off. I will try to demonstrate uh, to you a, another measurement. Uh, I will run the performance measurement here and now I will trigger layer paint work only. And then I will apply the paint property to my uh, container and then I will do the measurement again, trigger this paint work um, and then I stop it. What I hope that we will see is on the left in the flames, uh, a lot of uh, paint work, uh, maybe here as an average four milliseconds. And on the right, we should see a drastic drop and we can see that on the seconds. Um, I have a way more detailed measurements here in the slides. In the slides, we see that optimizing uh, an unoptimized page with all the visible content on the page takes some six milliseconds. If I maintain, uh, if I contain all that content with the with a div that has the contain property paint on it, we can reduce that work by six times. If you look at the milliseconds. And here we have an additional benefit in off-screen nodes. For off-screen nodes, we basically reduce the work another 10 times compared to the on-screen nodes. And this is really exciting um, to see. This basically tells us that all the work of, let's say, all the images that we use could easily be reduced by just applying another CSS property, for example, to the image. Um, there is a last property in the contain area. This is size um, as the impact is not measurable that well. Uh, I skipped the measures, but I still want to pitch uh, what it means for us. It basically means to us that if we apply that stuff, the calculation of the dimensions of that component is reduced a lot. It is similar to giving fixed dimensions front off, but with this additional property, the browser can skip even more work. So this is uh, also reducing the, the purple work, the layouting work. We have uh, design implications. We have heavy design implications. If we don't maintain 
a height, a physical height that is set statically to the box, it will collapse and not a single element will be visible. And this is something that we really have to keep in mind. Um, for contain, there are a set of shorthands. Why there are shorthands? Because you can use multiple, you can maybe use con uh, contain uh, layout, contain paint together, and so on. And those combinations are easier or harder to integrate, to use, because you have more or less downsides, as you know from before, the prices that we pay for the impact. So let me show you some of the shorthands, two uh, shorthands, and which one to use. The first shorthand on the left side is the contain content. Contain content is a combination of layout and paint. And if you remember visually, uh, contain layout had a dashed box, a dashed border box, and contain paint had a dotted um, visual boundary. Now those two visual concepts are also combined in this, in this image that you see, there is a dotted dashed line that basically maintains both performance optimizations in one, which is a really, really nice um, impact. The second thing is contain strict, and this will not only apply layout and paint, but also size. And as we know here, we really have to maintain and care about the, the dimensions that we apply. I created an overview table. Um, we know that it is more or less easy, moderate or hard to use that property. They have different impacts in performance. Um, then, especially for um, the impacts on layout, we will have differences in the layout route. The layout route basically determines from which on these dimensions are calculated. And as we saw, also the set index would change. So this is something really to keep in mind. I mentioned that here. I also mentioned how we deal with overflow, if the overflow is visible, invisible, hidden. And I also listed if the dimensions are required or not. And basically the shorthand content in this table is the easiest to use. Uh, with the biggest impact. And this is also what the, what the official specs tell us, uh, that we can more or less easily use content and we can hardly, hardly uh, use a strict without really caring about the stuff we do. Okay. This was theory about the border box, the visual boundaries, and I also mentioned off-screen, on-screen, and we saw that I did some measures with off-screen and on-screen nodes. Now I will introduce a little bit more uh, on concepts, and I will show you some tools that run in the browser under the hood that we can leverage, that we can leverage in all modern browsers, or at least in some of the modern browsers. And the first concept that I want to elaborate is the viewport. So our viewport is basically the screen, pixel screen size that you have on your phone or on your desk, uh, uh, on your laptop, on your PC, whatever. And then you have DOM nodes. And those nodes, these cards that you see here, they are either visible in this pixel area or they are not visible in the pixel area. And this dashed line, the visual boundary, shows us where the pixel area ends. And then we can name those nodes, we can categorize those nodes. We have basically two main category with a third one. We have above the fold content and those nodes are called on-screen nodes. And then we have below the fold content and these contents uh, or those nodes are called off-screen nodes. You can also see that on the right that we have on and off screen nodes. Uh, and then there is one more uh, special type. This is the obscured node. This is a node that is somehow partially visible and partially not. So those are our categories, our groupings for nodes. Uh, now let's dig into some more other concepts, some more rendering performance concepts that we need to understand that we can leverage. We now know the viewport and the three different node categories. 
What we also need to understand is the viewport observer concept. This is basically some logic that you can apply to a DOM node um, that looks if this DOM node is at the moment at the moment visible on the page in the viewport or not. And it knows how close it is. This is a very useful concept and we already can imagine that something like this must be used under the head uh, under the hood for lazy loading images. The loading lazy attribute, for example, is somehow connected to this concept. And then we have another concept that is the size observation or size observer concept. It helps us to basically listen to changes in the dimensional properties of an element and also very useful for all the things that fall in technology where we treat elements on screen different than on off screen. Um, and I will show you how to combine all those concepts in your head and how they are baked in into the latest features. And one of them that I want to present today is the content visibility. So content visibility is the last the second and last CSS property. And here I want to present two. I will, I will focus on one, on the auto um, property of content visibility. Um, and I will show you how uh, amazing this property is and what a drastic impact it can land uh, with just a slight uh, change in your code base. The, the support of this thing is not as good as with content, uh, with contain, uh, but uh, it is here uh, in the latest versions, in the latest versions of Chrome, Edge, uh, Opera, and some other browsers, we can leverage the power of this feature. Um, and I'm very happy to switch to the next slides now. We can look at the performance impacts first. On the left side, we see our visual system. Uh, we have the dotted dashed lines, and then we have this hard border box. Um, and we can look now uh, in the middle of the screen and I can pitch to you some nice information and a really great information. At first, I can tell you all the performance impacts, all the benefits and all the downsides of layout, contain layout are also included here. So all the benefits from contain layout are applied and reduce the layouting cost. On top of that, all the benefits of contain paint are applied and you will skip a lot of paint work um, for everything that owns that property. And now let me come to the really, really exciting part, uh, off-screen nodes. If a node is off-screen and detected by the content visibility property as off-screen, then the full recalculate sky styles is skipped from the render pipeline, which means that we basically can skip from the very beginning to the very end all the steps in the browser render pipeline. Recalculate styles, layout, paint composite, all that stuff can be skipped as the DOM nodes would not exist. Let me uh, go to the implications uh, and this time not as brutal as with the contains uh, size uh, property, but contain auto also will lead to some collapsing content if there is no size applied, if we don't maintain it properly. And on top of it, as the nodes will get treated as not existing, uh, they will also fully collapse if they scroll out of the viewport. Um, this can be uh, avoided by setting, as I showed before, this static maintain intrinsic size value to some, some pixel that are um, working. And you can demo that. Um, let me try before I go to the uh, final measurements to uh, add some more crazy content here. I hope my browser will not die now uh, and the demo is working. Uh, after the browser is done with the work, it should show us, yes, purple background. I will remove uh, any optimization. I go to none. I will start the measure and then I will apply content uh, visibility auto. And I can 
maybe also demonstrate that it collapses if I move it off screen. Uh, give me one second. I still have enough time. Uh, it is a lot of work for the browser to, to do the demo. I hope that uh, yeah, it will appear soon. Uh, now I can try to push it off screen. Yes, now I can apply that property and we see uh, a slight change in the site, in the scroll bar. If you look at this, if I apply contain auto and not. And this is the case because the off screen elements will collapse as I told you. So now let me run the measure. I'm really excited. Uh, I record, I apply some layouting work. Ooh, browser is heavily under pressure. I apply some paint work, paint, paint, paint. I, I hit this button, quickly layouting work again, quickly paint work again. And then I run the off screen, another layout, another paint. Ooh, it's getting way smoother now. I, I already feel it and I stop. And this will really take uh, a while to process it. So let me quickly switch back to the slides. Ah, it was very fast. Okay. Normally 30 seconds take, take a long time. So we see at the beginning unoptimized, a lot of frame drops. You can really see that every task took 100 milliseconds at least. Yeah. This is like every task is over 100 milliseconds. Uh, layouting and painting. Um, also at least 90. If we protect our task from 100 milliseconds to 14 and in the paint here two, and if I move them off screen, I, whew, where is it? Let me zoom in. Uh, the whole task is one millisecond uh, and paint it is uh, also one millisecond. So <laughs> no work at all. Amazing, exciting things. And this was a CSS property. So you have to bear in mind that all the, info, the, all the changes that I did were just some slight lines of code CSS. Incredible. This is the outcome. Um, with some less content that I showed now, unoptimized on screen and off screen, and you already see how drastical that changes are. Really amazing. Poof. Um, there is an overview table. I show you content visibility auto, content visibility hidden. Hidden basically is the property that the item gets when you move it on off screen. And then at the bottom, there is contain intrinsic size. Uh, this is the value that you need to give your elements to maintain their size when they are off screen. Um, to end all that really nice demonstrations, measurements, uh, and you have, shall I say, theoretical information, uh, I want to sum it up. I want to sum up with some overview measures of not demo, of not like uh, lab content, but more realistic content. And the first thing is demo content. So cards with images and other stuff and bootstrap performance. We see that the bootstrap time, it was quite a hassle for it. Uh, and we also have some nodes that are outside of the viewports that will trigger some work because maybe lazy loading of images or I don't know what is happening here. And if we optimize it with the two techniques, uh, contain and content visibility, we see that the time drastically reduce. We have no layout time at all. And also the off-screen flicker is nearly invisible. This was a runtime measurement from the same content, heavy work here, as you can see at the top. And if we apply the two properties, we see nearly no work here also, including the off-screen node impact, of course, drastically, I would say. Um, we have also some real life measures. We have the SPA that was already focusing, the Movies app, I call this project the Movies app. The link is here afterwards in the slides. It is um, a project from the Chrome team and Edios Money where they basically uh, want to write really fast applications in every framework and compare them to each other. And I tried to optimize uh, one of them only with CSS features. Uh, and even if this was a cutting edge performance app, I even there could lend some impact. 
I reduced from around 150 uh, seconds rendering to 25 and 30 milliseconds paint overall to seven, which is a really nice impact. I did not even measure the time spent for adding the DOM nodes, which is also way faster. We also applied that stuff uh, at ClickUp. My company runs a couple of improvements for them uh, on a long time basis and we already landed really nice improvements with containing content visibility there. We see that we are able to reduce the total blocking time a lot. Um, we halfen it and in some cases, in most of the cases, we are able to even reduce it to zero if we just know how to apply that in the correct way. That's basically it. Um, I, I have to say thanks for your time. Thanks that you had time also to wait until all the flame charts are <laughs> loaded and visible and, and look at them for all the demos. Uh, all the content is shared, the code examples, the click dummies, the slides. I also uh, maintained a full set of measures and research. This is a, maybe a last piece of content that I want to show. We maintain a library, a, a repository, CSS contain research. And here we basically sum up all our things with a lot of more links to read up and really understand the problem. And this is basically it. I will end this talk now. Feel free to ping me on Twitter or directly shoot me an email. And that's it. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Michael. Hope everyone enjoyed the session. If you have any question, now is the time. Uh, if not, uh, I would like to uh, say to you, enjoy your evening and hope to see you uh, tomorrow for uh, another day of uh, Dev Days, for another uh, session, for other session of the web and mobile. Uh, thank you, Michel. And bye, bye everyone.